Hello, my name is Russell Dolag from Nithi, Yap State in the FSM, here again with TFB Micronesia. Welcome to the second segment in our video series on Hawaii news bias. If you haven't seen part one of the series, you can find it in the link here. And for those of you returning, welcome back. TFB started as a means to access a powerful resource that was not readily available to us, information. In a culture with strong oral traditions, the passing of knowledge and information is often a guarded thing. TFB started gathering what we could from anywhere, publishing videos, recordings, interviews, pictures, and slowly writing our own news stories. But then we saw stories about Micronesians on Hawaiian news, written by other people, slowly forming an image and affecting public perceptions. Today we would like to share our thoughts on the depiction of Micronesians in Hawaiian media outlets such as these. Before we move forward, we have to understand implicit bias. Implicit bias is perspectives or opinions that you have that you're not aware of, often determining your actions or attitudes. Basically, we can look at implicit biases as a root of stereotypes, racism, and discrimination. What's important to understand about implicit biases is that they are implicit, meaning you're generally not aware of them. To further understand implicit bias, let's conduct a simple test. First, imagine a person, middle age, not doing too well. In fact, this person is homeless. This person's in need of help. Now hold on to that image. Now imagine a second person, middle age, well educated. In fact, they're a doctor. A medical doctor, successful, owns a nice house, and is an important member of society. Imagine these two people. Now tell me, what race is the first person? What ethnicity? What gender is that person? And does this person look like you? And what about the second person? The way you form those images is based on your implicit biases. But how did you form that image? What beliefs and opinions were involved to help you form that image? Is it popular culture? public stereotypes, experiences, or could have been the media. This presentation right now will be divided into three parts. First, the unconscious biases or implicit biases that feed stereotypes and hate mongering. Next is the influence and effect of biased media. And finally, a response and challenge to negative coverage. So let's jump right into it with this first clip. About 1% of Hawaii's population is from Micronesia, a large number of islands in the South Pacific. The state picks up a significant part of the tab for their health care, education, and housing. The state doesn't think that's fair. The language here alone creates an otherness. COVA citizens versus taxpayers picking up the tab. With audio removed, we see the images of how the media sees a diverse group of cultures just lazily loitering, roly-poly individuals that waddle through the streets that only seem to picnic in the parks. The topic of the news is not laziness, unemployment, or homelessness for that matter, but these images suggest it. They reinforce social stereotypes and implicit biases. In the age of social media, the comment section has become the other half of every report. Here are some comments on this video. F Micronesians. They get everything for free. Cockroaches. It's important to make a distinction between trolls and genuine discrimination and hate. There are those who just try to elicit a negative reaction, but it feeds into the discussion and it becomes part of the language. In this next clip, we see a sort of lateral racism the media introduces. Very quickly, lateral racism is racism between minority groups. People start throwing things back, then one man charges across with a bat, and the melee begins as a driver slowly backs up. We're told this was a simmering feud between two large families, one Samoan, one Micronesian. The brawl ended with one young man critically injured. They could have just noted it was two families, not Samoan and Micronesian families. Here's a comment made by a viewer. These two are just exhibiting savage behavior that goes back thousands of years. 
in yet another clip. Waimanalo fishermen say sometimes at night they'll see groups of 15 to 20 Micronesian spear fishermen here offshore with their lights on, spearing lots of fish and sometimes breaking the law. Because of the increased attention and oversight, the Waimanalo fishermen say the Micronesian spear fishermen have now found a new place to fish at night. They're going offshore here at Sandy Beach. Again, they didn't need to say that it was Micronesians, but the story needed a bad guy, a villain. And conveniently for them, but unfortunately for us, that villain is Micronesians. They made us a boogeyman out to get your fish in the night. Then they sensationalize a war, more lateral racism, but now between the Hawaiians and Micronesians. We just hope that they, they can uh, make time to take care of these issues before, you know, the Hawaiians and the Micronesians end up going to war. Is this the public perception? That there is a war between Hawaiians and Micronesians? Maybe for that one person. But the news needed more than illegal fishing. The news needed a war. And to be fair to the report, there is a war. And it happens online. Comments, reactions, and different news reports. Language and images used by the media embolden these comments. And here are some examples. And it's not just comments. A resident shot this next clip and it went viral. Homeless camp in Kaka'ako. Almost all Micronesians. And kids. Hundreds and hundreds of homes. Homeless all by the Children's Center. All these kids, you can see bicycles and bicycles and little toddlers sitting on the road. This is the description for the video. Note the likes and shares over 150,000 views and nearly 300 comments on at least this thread. We were told that this video was reposted several times. The next video is by Hawaii News Now, and it's very similar in tone. What the critics and the residents in this area have been complaining about. Over here, it's like a bike shop, a chop shop. Uh, we have parts and pieces. Look at that. Uh, tire after tire inside. It looks like a, a literally a bike store. You know, the families here, uh, we're told, majority of them uh, come from the three nations that uh, have signed the treaty with the U.S. known as the Compact a Free Association. And uh, social service workers say they don't know where, what's happening with the disconnect, but a lot of them are arriving. They're not informed about what to expect here. Uh, they're getting into the public housing system, maybe with a relative or family member, and then overpopulating those facilities and literally out on the streets. We can see a relationship between people influencing the media. But more importantly, where is the research in this story? Where did she get these numbers? Who are her sources? But the most shocking part of her report was this. We're going to send it back to you in the studio, but an ongoing issue and the, the, probably the most shocking was yesterday, real quick as we head out, footage of a woman, this is last week we saw this, taking water out of one of the water pipes. We don't know whether it's a, a board of water supply yet, and we don't know what impact, if any, the water was just running everywhere. Who is paying for that? Taxpayers? Is somebody being overbilled? It's unclear. Guys, a lot of questions uh, today. Back to you. To the reporter, the most shocking part of the report was a homeless person possibly costing taxpayers money. Pardon me, but I think the most shocking thing should have been in a first world country, residents don't have access to clean water. Finally, many media outlets when talking about COFA or Micronesian migrants will have this generic paragraph that they copy and paste onto every article. 
when written this way, it simplifies the compact. It makes it seem like a charity rather than an agreement between two sovereign nations. As Micronesian activist Jojo Peter explained, the compact is a relationship. And every relationship involves at least two people. We would like to challenge journalists to add just one sentence to make this copy-paste just a little better. And that is, in exchange for total military control of their islands and waters. This concludes this part of our report. And we'll be back with the next half shortly. The effects of biased media. Once again, I'm Russell Dolak from Ruthie Yap in the FSM with TFB Micronesia. Hope to see you guys again soon.